now the posterior part of the norma basalis now as you know it extends from the arbitrary line extending from the anterior margin of foramen magnum to the external occipital protuberance and superior nuchal line so this is the territory of the posterior part of the norma basalis now again for descriptive purpose it is subdivided into a median area and two lateral areas this is the occipital bone and this portion is squamous part of the occipital bone and uh, this is condylar part of the occipital bone here this is the basilar part of the occipital bone so the most conspicuous foramen is the foramen magnum this is external occipital crest and uh, this is the external occipital protuberance so these three structures are included in the median area now in the lateral area it shows condylar part of the occipital bone or occipital condyles you can see over here on either side of the foramen magnum squamous part of the occipital bone and formation of jugular foramen between the occipital bone and petrous temporal bone let me show you an articulated skull this is jugular foramen so this is occipital bone and this is petrous temporal bone so in the lateral area there is jugular foramen on other side in addition to this there are mastoid processes they belong to the temporal bone and styloid processes they again belong to the temporal bone so these areas are included in the lateral part now let's see foramen magnum it is the largest foramen of the skull which opens upward into the posterior cranial fossa uh, this is the posterior cranial fossa so here it opens and below it opens into the vertebral canal which is a, a canal formed by joining of all the vertebrae now the foramen magnum is more or less oval in shape being wider behind than in front and anteriorly it is overlapped by occipital condyles now structures passing through foramen magnum from posteriorly it allows passage of lower part of the medulla which is continuous as spinal cord the tonsils of cerebellum which will be uh, related somewhere over here they do not pass through it but they may project over here and meninges three meninges now as the meninges will pass there forms subarachnoid space so subarachnoid space of cranial cavity that is continuous with the subarachnoid space of the vertebral canal so subarachnoid space is continuous filled with csf so within the subarachnoid space there are also certain structures like spinal accessory now two vertebral arteries which are branches of subclavian artery the sympathetic plexus will also run along with the vertebral arteries and anterior and posterior spinal arteries so these many structures will pass or will run through subarachnoid space and from the narrow anterior part there passes apical ligament of the dens which is connected to the tip of the odontoid process of the axis vertebrae and it is attached over here somewhere it is attached to posterior part of the basi occiput somewhere over here membrana tectoria and vertical limb of cruciate ligament so three structures are passing from the anterior narrow part now in addition to it the margins of foramen provide attachment to anterior and posterior atlanto occipital membrane now we know here lies the atlas and in between atlas and occipital bone there is a gap in front and behind so that gap is filled by anterior and posterior atlanto occipital membrane let me show you so this is the atlas and it will articulate like this to the occipital condyles and there will be formation of atlanto occipital joint so here you can see there is a gap in front which is filled by anterior atlanto occipital membrane similarly posteriorly there will be a gap which is filled by posterior atlanto occipital membrane now if you see the occipital condyles medially over here there is a rough margin and this rough margin will provide attachment to alar ligaments now posteriorly from the posterior margin of the foramen magnum you can see over here this is external occipital crest the crest provides attachment to upper margin of ligamentum nuchae now if you see the external occipital protuberance two arching lines will run from medial to lateral they are superior nuchal lines and midway from external occipital protuberance to the foramen magnum from the external occipital crest two another nuchal lines will pass these are inferior nuchal lines 
the external occipital protuberance will provide attachment to trapezius superiorly and ligamentum nuchae inferiorly now let's see the lateral area as you have discussed the lateral area will include condylar part of the occipital bone squamous part of the occipital bone the jugular foramen the stylar process and master process the stylar process and master process they belong to the temporal bone now let's see condylar part of the occipital bone these are oval shaped condyles situated on either side of the foramen magnum near its anterior margin the long axis of the condyles are directed forward and medially and these condyles will articulate with the superior articular facet of the atlas vertebrae to form atlanto occipital joint so this is atlas this is superior articular facet this is inferior articular facet so the superior articular facet will join with occipital condyle to form atlanto occipital joint now uh, there is a hypoglossal canal or anterior condylar canal this canal are found entro superior to the occipital condyles over here you can see these are anterior condylar canal or hypoglossal canal and it transmits hypoglossal nerve meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery and an emissary vein connecting sigmoid sinus to the internal jugular vein now there are another canal they are called as posterior condylar canal now if you see it inside they open near the sigmoidal sulcus over here you can see posterior condylar canal and it connects the uh, sigmoidal sulcus with this suboccipital region so obviously it allows passage of an emissary vein that connects suboccipital venous plexus to the sigmoidal sinus so these two structures are connected by the emissary vein passing through the posterior condylar canal so same thing you can see in a separate bone anteriorly there is hypoglossal canal and posteriorly there is condylar canal or the posterior condylar canal now lateral to the occipital condyles you can see over here there are two processes these are termed as jugular process now these two will form posterior boundary of jugular foramen and the uh, uh, surface inferior to it this portion will provide attachment to the rectus capitis lateralis now the same thing i'll show you in articulated skull these two are occipital condyles and lateral to it over here this is the jugular process now uh, this this is jugular foramen so as i told you the jugular foramen is a foramen between occipital bone and petrous temporal bone so the occipital portion of jugular foramen this is the jugular process and the surface below to it will provide attachment to the rectus capitis lateralis muscle now let's see squamous part of the occipital bone now the area between superior nuchal line and inferior nuchal line this portion of the squamous occipital bone it will provide insertion medially to the semispinalis capitis over here and laterally to the superior oblique muscle so medially semispinalis capitis laterally superior oblique muscle the area below inferior nuchal line over here medially it provides attachment to rectus capitis posterior minor and laterally to the rectus capitis posterior major now we know these muscles are forming boundary of suboccipital triangle now let's see jugular foramen this is jugular foramen it is a large elongated and its long axis are directed forward and medially so uh, this is the jugular foramen now let's see the structures passing through jugular foramen from the anterior part of the jugular foramen it allows passage of inferior petrosal sinus so the inferior petrosal sinus will be found over here lodging between the groove of basi occiput and petrous temporal bone second thing is meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery now from the middle part of the jugular foramen the 9th 10th and 11th cranial now will pass and from the posterior part you can see over here there is a formation of bulb over here will be the superior bulb of the internal jugular vein so beyond that the internal jugular vein itself will come out of it from the posterior part and in addition to it it is accompanied by meningeal branch of occipital artery so these many structures will pass through it now this is jugular fossa posterior most part of the jugular foramen and in the lateral wall of the jugular fossa over here you can see there is a small foramen this is called as mastoid canaliculus now as you know from the middle part of the 
jugular forum and their passes 9 10th and 11th cranial now so 10th is a vagus now so one of the branch of vagus now auricular branch of vagus will pass through this canaliculus this is called as master and canaliculus and from that canaliculus the auricular branch of vagus now will pass through that bone and finally it will emerge out between the tympanic plate and the mastoid process somewhere over here this is called as tympanomastoid suture or tympanomastoid fissure so from here the auricular branch of vagus now or it is also called as alderman's now will emerge out now another canaliculus that is called as cochlear canaliculus now this is situated in the petrous temporal bone now if you see the petrous temporal bone this is jugular fossa which will contribute to form jugular foramen now on its medial side there is a notch you can see over here this is glossopharyngeal notch which is lodged by inferior ganglion of glossopharyngeal and deep to it you will find a canaliculus very small aperture that is called as cochlear canaliculus the aqueduct of cochlea opens into the depth of the canaliculus and from that the paralymph will drain into subarachnoid space so that is cochlear canaliculus now another canaliculus is found that is called as tympanic canaliculus that is situated between the carotid canal and the jugular fossa between the there is a bony plate and into that bony plate there is an opening this is called as tympanic canaliculus the tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal now will pass through it and it will enter inside the middle ear so there are three such canaliculi found in relation to the jugular foramen now another structure in lateral area is the styloid process now this is a long slender bony projection and it's a part and parcel of the temporal bone and partially it is ensheathed by the tympanic plate literally you can see over here and the styloid process is directed downward forward and slightly medially now if you see from below just medial to the styloid process over here this is jugular foramen and the internal jugular vein will emerge out of it so medially the styloid process is related to the internal jugular vein and laterally this portion belongs to the parotid region so laterally it is related to the parotid gland and mainly three muscles the styloglossus stylohyoid and stylopharyngeus muscle they are attached to it and two ligaments stylomandibular ligament and stylohyoid ligaments are attached to it so styloid process with three muscles and two ligaments they are collectively termed as styloid apparatus now these five attachments two ligaments and three muscles they resemble reins of a chariot out of this the two ligaments are non adjustable whereas the other three the muscles they are adjustable and they are controlled by three separate nerves so styloglossus it is supplied by hypoglossal nerve the stylohyoid is supplied by facial nerve and stylopharyngeus is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve so that is about styloid process now another structure in the lateral area is mastoid process it's a large conical projection situated posterior lateral to the styloid process and again it's a part and parcel of the temporal bone and deep to it there lies mastoid notch you can see over here this will provide origin to posterior belly of digastric muscle medial to that notch there is a groove and that is lodged by occipital artery now between styloid process and mastoid process there is a foramen the name itself is suggestive of stylo mastoid foramen now this allow passage of facial nerve from the middle ear the facial nerve will emerge out of it and then it will enter inside the parotid gland and stylomastoid branch of posterior auricular artery will enter inside so that is about lateral area of the posterior part of norma basalis so this is about norma basalis hope you understood well thanks for watching